people, and God is about to use you mightily. Come on. Hallelujah. We've got to know who we are. We've got to find out, you know, that we were, we were created and, and we were born for such a time as this. And, and more so than any other character, uh, patriarch, uh, apostle, more than any of those that have gone before us. Well, you got a need, go, oh, brother, <laughs> pastor. No, no. I, what I'm saying is God has saved the best for last. What I'm saying is God's trying to get us over here to the point where we realize who we are and the great harvest that is about to take place on planet Earth. Hallelujah. And we're going to be right dab in the middle of it. Amen. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 42 tonight. We've been going through this uh, this month on Wednesday nights. And uh, I believe God is uh, getting us up on the mountaintop. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 42. And let's, let's start a little. Uh, let's go back to verse 6. So let's start there tonight. I, the Lord have called you in righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. And will hold your hand. Oh, isn't that good? And will keep you and give you for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. How many know God has, in, in, in you're in right standing because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And really, this is a prophetic word here. It's saying, you are the people that are about to bring in the Gentiles. Come on, somebody. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That, that is my name. Hallelujah. Oh, I am the yod hey vav hey. I am, I am. That's who he is. That, that is my name and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things, the former things are come to pass, and new things, everybody say new things. There's some new things that are about to burst out. There's some new things that are about to be released. And new things do I declare, before they spring forth I tell you of them. How many know that God calls the end from the beginning? Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth that you uh, go down to the sea and all the inhabitants therein, the isles or the, the farthest reaches and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice and the villages that, uh, that Kedar does inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock <laughs> how, many are, how many are dwelling in him tonight? Glory be to God. The inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout. Let them shout from the top of the mountains or from the mountaintops. Glory be to God. It is time to shout. It is time to declare. It is time to decree. It is time to prophesy. We've got to begin to speak what we want to happen in the last days. We need to start speaking what we're going to be doing in the last days. Don't, don't wait for something to happen. Well, we're just waiting for something to happen. No, we, we're going we're to prophesy it. Amen. We're going to begin to speak some things, especially right here in this church. I believe God has called this church. I, be, I believe that with 100% of my heart. When he spoke to me about starting this church, he said it's going to be a last day's harvest church. He said, I'm calling you. He said, I am speaking strategically to churches all over this land and to pastors and to traveling ministers and different ministers and calling them and some to start churches. But he said, I want, I want my people not just to get saved. He said, this last harvest, they're going to get saved. They're going to get filled. They're going to have the power of God hit them. You're going to see creative miracles. You're going to see financial miracles. You're going to see the, you're going to see the glory poured out. Come on. Well, this is that. <laughs> this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. We're in this hour. Hallelujah. And we need to call those things which be not as though they were. Just like Jesus. Amen. Prophesying the end. Well, what are we prophesying? Revival. Come on. Somebody shout revival. revival. 
praise, hallelujah, praise, just praising Him and worshiping Him. And, and we've got to get to a point where we, we shout it from the mountaintops. We prophesy from the mountaintops. We, we speak forth the word of the living God. We rise up every morning, every morning, speaking and prophesying revival, hallelujah. Not, not just complacent and saying, well, this, you know, we'll see what happens. No, we make it happen. We're the children of the Most High God. We are called to this. We were made for this hour. We're in the greatest hour of the church. Amen? And we've got to realize that. I mean, when you think about Jesus, uh, two days, a day unto the Lord is a thousand years. Well, from His death, which was at 33, 33 years old, A.D., 33, and you add two days to that, that's 2,033. I'm going to preach myself happy tonight. When you realize that, that, that it, 2033, now the, the, the calendars are off a few years. We know that because it talks about how Herod uh, uh, died at a certain year, and we know that Herod was still alive at the time of Jesus. So we know that they're off a few years. So it's more likely that two days from 33. Now, I mean, we don't, so many people mess this thing up. They try, to, they try to have two days start with his birth. It doesn't start with his birth. It start, starts with his death. It starts with the Passover calendar, which is the death of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And so when you study that forth and you find out that we are somewhere around 2028, 20, someone say six years. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying a date. I'm not giving you a day or the hour. Maybe a year. I'm not giving you a day or an hour, but I'm telling you something. 2028 is also, I mean, out of two witnesses. Everybody say two witnesses. The other witness is in 1948, 1948, Israel became a nation. And how many know that the that's that's the olive tree? That's that's the that's the, that's the beginning of the, the the leaves. That's the beginning of of Israel again. And so, what do you do? You have to you have to a generation shall not pass away before his return. A generation is either 70 or 80 in the Word of God. It's not 40. They use that in the wilderness and that. It was 70 or 80. Now, 120 is how long, how long a lifespan will be, but a generation in the Bible is 70 or 80. How many know 70 years from 48 was in 2018? It's already passed. How many, if you don't know that passed, it did. And, and how many know that 80 years is 2028. 2028 again, 2028 from, the, from, from Jesus' death, and 2028 from 1948 and Israel getting back in the land. Two different witnesses that 2028, come on, we've got to realize when they signed the Abrahamic Accords, when they recognized uh, Jerusalem is the capital just in, in, in the last few years. When we realize who we are and where we're at, we're at the last hours. Now, we're at the last moments. This is 11.59. Man, this is where the clock is, is, is all the way to the end here. Now, we have a few years. And you know what those few years are for? Revival. I said revival. We're not going out in a whimper. We're going out in a blaze of glory. We've got to know who we are, and we've got to know the, the timetable. Somebody say the timetable. We're going to use every available voice. We're going to use every available voice to get the word out and proclaim and to, and to decree and to prophesy revival. Hallelujah. Time for revival. And it's time for us to know that. Turn with me to Ezekiel. Chapter 37. We're living in the greatest hour, and most people are asleep. This is that. <laughs> this is the greatest hour the, the, the church will ever see, and we've got to know it. We've got to, we've got to embrace it, and we've got to prophesy it. 
Ezekiel chapter 37. And let's just start in verse 1. Now I'm going to revisit this. We've already touched on it, but let's, let's look at it again. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold, there were very dry and many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And again, he said to me, Prophesy, I say prophesy. And he said to me, Prophesy upon these bones and say to them, O you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. There is a valley of dry bones in rock wall and round about this whole area of people that need Jesus. You may be the only Jesus they ever see. There are people right now all around like dry bones waiting for us to prophesy breath into them, to speak revival, to speak, to wake up in the morning. How many, how many wake up in the morning and say, Lord God, use me today. Put someone in my path that I can share my testimony with. Come on, there's Jerry. Glory be to God. Amen. He's ready to go. We've got to be, we've got to, if you pray that kind of prayer, God will do it. Well, I don't really want Him to do it. I don't know what I would say. Well, do you know your own testimony? We overcome the enemy by the, 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 the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We know our testimony. We know how we got saved. And really, that, that's the best way to, to witness is sharing your testimony. Why? Because you know it better than anybody else. You may not know the four spiritual laws backwards and forwards. You may not know this and that, but you know how Jesus touched you. It's getting quiet in this church. <laughs> we, got, we got to get to the point where we are excited over being used of God. There is no greater thing. I'll never forget when I was in Bible school, there was a street evangelist that brought a group of us out to teach us how to, how to witness. Now, he was a little different. I, I mean, I'm not saying this is the best way to do it. <laughs> but he'd roll down the window, and there'd be people there at the bus stop, and he'd go, Are you saved? And they, they said, what? Are you saved? Are you going to heaven? And they said, well, I don't know. Will you pray with me right now? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and they, they, he would pray the sinner's prayer at a red light that turned green and we'd go. And the people there got saved at the bus stop. I'm thinking, this is an, there's an anointing on this because that just doesn't happen. I mean, he, <laughs> he, was, he, would just, he would just run up to a group of people and, and start, you know, <laughs> he wasn't sharing his testimony. He'd just get them saved like that. Now, you need to guide them into a church. Amen. You get them saved, uh, don't throw them out on the bank, you know, uh, like a fish out of water uh, with no, you know, you got <laughs> you to take them in and, and, and say, no, we want you to come to our church. Well, I, I, don't you think it's good if you just bring them to any church? No. No, absolutely no. You don't know what that other church is doing. You know what's going on here. You lead them here. Amen? Amen. You know what I find it with, with Facebook? Uh, nobody here at this church. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I see them sharing posts of other churches. I do. I see them. You know, Judy, praise God, you've been sharing this church but, and, and some others. But I, I see people sharing posts from other ministries and other churches, and I'm thinking to myself, uh, 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 you really don't know, I mean, a lot about that other church, but you know about this one. And we're trying to build a work here. Come on, somebody. So I, I, I challenge you. When you get on Facebook or, or Twitter or any of these social media, uh, share the different things that, that the church is putting up. Uh, we're going to start a new thing tomorrow. We, we, I'm putting the name of the church and our logo on all the posts. Hallelujah. I was told, do that. Uh, and, and I didn't do it for a long time because uh, 
every time I mention the church, I get less likes because people, we already go somewhere else, you know, and, and so they don't want to, you know, whatever. But I've realized that we've got to get the word out about this church because we've got a job to do. Amen? And when we begin to realize that God has got you in the right place at the right time for revival. And let me tell you something. Man, the people start coming in. We got, we got someone saved last week, glory to God. And, and it came in on Wednesday night. And we, we see people healed all the time. Why? Because God is still <laughs> in the miracle working business and he wants souls saved. Amen. So I'm excited about what God's doing and we're going to get right down and we're going to prophesy over the dry bones. Look at verse 10. It says, So I prophesied as he commanded and the breath came into them, life. And they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. There is an army when we begin to prophesy and we've seen, we've seen and heard of, of uh, different testimonies. Uh, Kathleen gets visions, and she had a vision of, of people just crowds coming into this church. How many know uh, when the Lord starts working, uh, He draws. I said He draws all men. God starts work. Come on, hallelujah. And, and she saw people coming in. I'll never forget when, when uh, uh, Trump, uh, this last election with him and Biden, uh, everybody said, oh, Trump's going to win, you know, and, and hands down, he's got these great crusades and, and thousands of people, and Biden has 12 people show up. And, and, and she, she's open vision. I'm not talking about a dream. I'm talking about open vision where she saw a crowd of people with Trump, but Trump was leaving, and all these men came in with blue jackets. I mean, a blue jackets is Democrats. Well, I didn't want to receive her vision. I didn't want to receive, you know, Trump leaving and, and, and these blue, all these blue coats coming in. But let me tell you something. God began to speak through her to me, and, and I began to see some things before anybody really understood what was going on. There's been others that have seen crowds coming into this place. This place is too small. I said, this place is too small. What's about to happen? Come on, glory be to God. But we all play a part. God draws, but we also have to listen to what God is saying because God's about to put you in the right place at the right time. When God puts you in the right place at the right time, it's not a hard thing, it's a beautiful thing. You know, there's nothing like leading someone to the Lord. When that guy brought me out uh, that day at, at Bible school, I led 27 people to the Lord that afternoon. 27 people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There was an anointing on that, but let me tell you, there's an anointing on you. And there's an anointing that's about to drop on the church in the last days that's going to be supernatural, and there will be some that enter into it and have the most glorious time, and there'll be others that'll be on the sidelines. I don't, I'm, I'm going to be in the game. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to be on the sidelines watching and saying, oh, boy, that, that's something good. No, I want, I want to be right down in the middle of it. Amen? Hallelujah. An exceeding great army is about to enter in. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Psalm 67. Psalm 67. How many love the Word of God? Verse 5. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear Him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, my, 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 my. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Shout it from the mountaintops. Praise Him. Worship Him. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And the earth, the earth, shall yield her increase. Praise Him, and the earth shall yield her increase of souls. Come on, hallelujah. The earth will bring forth harvest. The earth will bring forth blessing. The earth will bring forth. But you've got to begin to prophesy it. 
I'll never forget Reinhard Bonnke. Reinhard Bonnke, uh, a German man, uh, felt the Lord leading him to Africa. When he went to Africa, he met up with some missionaries there, and he, he I mean, he's ready to go. And he asked the missionaries, he said, um, how many uh, souls have you won this year? And they, they got excited. They said, we, we've won, uh, I think there was like three or four. He said, three or four? The whole year? He said, yeah, we, but we let, them, we let them to the Lord, three or four. He realized there must be something wrong that they're doing. And he rented a soccer field. <laughs> he, rented, he rented a soccer field. And he began to prophesy, Africa shall be saved. <laughs> he, he just kept saying that. Africa shall be saved. And, and, and he said it just like that. I mean, he just kept prophesying. He, and when he rented that big soccer field, nobody had been doing that. And people began to come from every... They were drawn to that soccer field, came in, and, and he began to have revival, and he began to see souls, and he began to see miracles, and the glory of God came down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, when I was working for Brother Copeland... Uh, you know, he, he funded, he underwrote all those years, Reinhard Bonnke's ministry, not all the years, but once people began to know about him, Kenneth Copeland's the one that paid for his meetings and his big tent and all those things, hallelujah. How many know that God brings those things in? He begins to do certain things. God's doing some things right now. There's some things I'm going to tell you pretty soon. I, we're, in a, we're in the right place at the right time, and God is moving. And sometimes we don't see it all. But when, when God spoke to me, he said, he said, you start that work in Rockwall. I said, amen. And, and, and I started, I saw fate, and I saw Heath, and I saw these different, and the Lord said, no, 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 I said Rockwall. <laughs> How many know that when God says something, you, you better listen to him? Because, yeah, you know, you think, well, you mean this general area. No, he said Rockwall. Well, there's already some big churches here in Rockwell. He said, no. He said, there's churches here, but not the way I want it done. He said, I want churches that are going to, they're going to speak, they're going to prophesy, they're going to have signs and wonders, and, and literally you're going to see creative miracles in this hour. There's going to be some things that other churches, they, they just can't get past their traditions and religion and all that stuff to get there. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna run this race. Amen? Amen? We're running this race. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We, we're not going to satisfy, well, you know, there's about three or four going to save. No. It's time to prophesy. Rockwall shall be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me. He said, I've got an anointing on Rockwall. You know, uh, Kenneth Hagin got his healing uh, anointing uh, when he did the, his tent revival years ago uh, back here in Rockwall. Hallelujah. Others came and prophesied over Rockwall. One of the first uh, big mega churches was right over here, uh, Church on the Rock. Uh, and now uh, I, I began to say to the Lord, I said, Lord, prove it to me. Prove it to me that Rockwall, there's something, you tell me. And then we find out that the red heifers for the temple are right here in Rockwall. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We're in, if you don't got goosebumps right now, you might... Um, it's time to get fired up. Amen? It's time to realize who we are. We are in the right place at the right time. And you know there's an enemy that's trying to, to, uh, trying to get people distracted. There's people that are trying to get... There's an enemy that comes in and trying to distract the body and get us off course of something so great. Why? Because, you know, even the enemy knows there's an anointing upon rock wall. And it's about time we knew it too. Turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4. Of course, is, well, go down here to, uh, go down to verse 26. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. And Jesus said, So is the kingdom of God, is if a man should cast seed into the ground. Hallelujah. And should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should bring, uh, spring 
and uh, grow up and he knows not how. How many know you don't need to know how, you need to know who? For the earth brings forth fruit of itself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. We're talking about harvest. But when the first is brought forth, immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest is come. Hallelujah. We need to plant the word of the living God and watch it bring forth harvest. You know, soil, dirt, <laughs> knows nothing but to grow things. That's what its function is. Uh, you, you put seed in the ground, the ground will immediately start working the seed to produce it. Adam was made from the dust of the earth. We are to plant the seeds of the word in this dirt. Come on, somebody. You're dirt, not, not you, Ray. We're all dirt, glory be. <laughs> We're all dirt. Come on, somebody. We're dirt. God created us so that everything we put in here, its function is to produce it. We function uh, just like good Soil. Come on. Hallelujah. Do you know that just south of here, not here and just south of here, it was always known uh, in this area for being good, dark soil. Rock wall was good, dark soil. Matter of fact, there's the, the black lands and, and the different areas. They were called that because this is an area of, of good soil. Well, that all goes into play with this last harvest. What you see in the natural is actually trying to show you what's going on and what's going to go on in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. If you look at old maps, the area over here and over there is just called Blacklands, and, 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 and it was talking about the soil. Glory to God. Well, there's, a, there's something going on in the spiritual realm, and, and those that want to press in, those that want to see it, it'll fire you up. I'm fired up. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, you stick a, a, a stick in the ground, the ground will try to grow something out of it. It doesn't know anything but to grow whatever is in that dirt. It'll start deteriorating that thing, trying to work it and do something with it. But I'll tell you what, you put the Word of God in you. Now, better than that, start putting the Word in someone else. Start putting the Word and prophesying the Word into your neighbor. When you prophesy and you speak the word of God into people, it will have a harvest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, I'm reminded of George Whitfield. George Whitfield came over in, I think it was 1740, from England. And when he came over here to the United States, well, not the United States, when he came over here to the colonies, uh, he, he, I mean, he's bringing revival. Now, over here, they did not pronounce his name Whitfield. Over here, they pronounced it white field. How many know there is a white field under harvest? He came over here. You know, uh, the early Puritans that first came over, they were on fire. They were on fire. They're going to they're get the Indians saved. They're going to start a whole new world and the kingdom for God. And they were excited. But over the years, by the time it was 1740, there was a lot of complacency. There was a lot of people that, that just began to, you know, uh, burn out. And so, uh, George Whitfield came, Whitefield, came over here. And when he did, he'd go out in the field, Whitefield. He'd go out and get a field. And, and, and people were drawn to him. And he had great revivals. And the people began to turn around. People began to get on fire again. You know, when you look at the early uh, founding fathers of this country, they always make out that... Uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin was one of the worst. They always say, well, he was a deist. You know, he was an agnostic at best. I mean, he just, he, he was, you know, so, you know, whatever. Well, how many of you know they're trying to rewrite history? Our, our founding fathers were Christians. Come on, somebody. And you know that uh, <laughs> Benjamin Franklin's best friend was George Whitfield? And you know that Benjamin Franklin was in those revivals in those fields? Come on, hallelujah. 
We've got to know these things, people. We've got to know our history. And we've got to know that God made us a lighthouse. God has made the United States of America a lighthouse to this world. And we are the people that will ignite the fire that will go around the world. But we've got to know who we are. And we've got to begin to act on it. And we've got to prophesy. We've got to prophesy. Rockwall, in the surrounding areas, shall be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Joel chapter 2. Now, they, I just want to touch on this real quick. Joel chapter 2, of course, that was first began on Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, but it, it's been going and it's about to take place, the former reign, and now the former and the latter reign together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Joel chapter 2, and go down here to verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. We're talking about a gully washer. Hallelujah. How many know there's, there's been a following, falling away? You look at uh, colleges today that teach socialism, and, and they teach... Uh, really uh, an atheist uh, agenda. There's been a falling away. It's almost like the tide when it goes out. There's a tide, it goes out like a falling away. And that tide, uh, if you've ever been at the ocean and you see that tide begin to go out and it's just, it, it just going out further and further. But you know what? When there's a falling away of that tide and it, at its greatest ability of going out, there's a tsunami that's about to happen. I said there's a tsunami that's about to happen. Yeah, there's been a falling away in many different areas, but there's a tsunami of the glory of God that's about to take place on planet Earth. There is a tsunami that is about to hit. There is a last harvest that is about to outpour on, on this world on the face of this earth, but we've got to begin as the children of God to allow God to do it. Now, what are you saying, allow God to do it? Let me tell you something. You have a part in this. We prophesy it. We speak it. We pray for it. We believe for it. We use our faith. and God uses His grace. God doesn't just say, well, okay, I'm just, you know, no. He's waiting for his people. He's waiting on his people to rise up. He's waiting on us to rise up and speak the word of the living God and believe that we are a chosen people for this hour, a royal priesthood, holy nation, an army of God that rises up and declares, prophesies what is about to happen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. We know it by the Word. We know it by the Word. We know what is about to happen. Look what it says. It says, And the floors shall be full of wheat, that's souls, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil, that's the Holy Ghost, and I will restore, hallelujah, restoration, I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten and the canker worm, the palmer worm, or the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else in my people Shall, shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Everybody say all flesh. all flesh. And your sons and daughters, didn't say just sons, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, the handmaidens, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show you wonders in the heavens uh, in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. There's going to be a pillar of smoke on the top of this, this building. 
And the Son, and it's going to be Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. How many know we've been having red moons? We've been having red moons the whole 2000s. Come on, glory to God. Uh, these are signs. These are signs that these things are coming to pass. Those red moons are not just happening by chance. There's, there's only been certain times, NASA figured this out, that red moons, uh, there's only been a certain amount uh, over the years to now, but it now it's like, hello, people. <laughs> this is that. Glory be to God. Which was prophesied by the prophet Job. And we've got to know it. Amen. Glory be to God. Turn with me to Amos real quickly. Amos chapter 9. Amos Jeffrey. That's my grandson's name. <laughs> Amos. Oh, oh, the glory. Amos chapter uh, 9. Wrong pages. Move. Amos chapter 9, go down here to verse uh, 13. Behold, the days come, say the days are come, says the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, <laughs> the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that sows seed, and sows the words, and the mountains, ever say mountains? You know it's time to shout from the mountaintops. You know, when someone says, you know, uh, why, do they sh why is it talking about shouting from the mountaintops? And you hear people saying, shout from the rooftops. Because when you shout from the mountaintop, you reach more people. When you're up on, the, on top of the house or the rooftops, you reach more people. It's talking about shouting from a mountaintop because we use mountaintop faith to get the prophecy out there that the people will hear it. Hallelujah. There's some things going on in the spirit where you just prophesy. Nobody hears you prophesying, but God hears it, and it's happening through the spirit realm. Glory to God. And so we prophesy. You know what I love about this? Look what this verse, you know, we always talk about the plowman overtaking the reaper, and that, that's so wonderful because it's talking about an accelerated harvest. Everybody say accelerated harvest. But, but look what it says. It says, And the treader of grapes, him that sows seed, and the mountain shall drop. Everybody say drop. Sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. <coughs> the word drop, now I always thought the word drop just meant, you know, just kind of flowing and so forth. But I, I looked that up in the Hebrew. And, and, and man, I, I was about ready to run around the house. It means, the word drop means to prophesy. That word drop means to prophesy. And the, and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall prophesy. We're, we're prophesying from the mountaintops. Sweet wine, the Holy Ghost. The, the, how many remember the, 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 the wedding at Cana? Come on, hallelujah. You know, the, that, was, that was Jesus' first miracle. How many know firsts always matter? The first miracle of Jesus had a lot to do with the end. God calls the end from the beginning. If God calls the end from the beginning, the very first miracle was at the wedding of Canaan, what is it about that wedding that is calling the end from the beginning? Because that was his first miracle. He goes into that wedding feast, and his mom, oh my gosh, she said, just do whatever he said. Do it. And the, and, and the governor of the feast and the different ones there, you know, they're, they're all, uh, uh, okay, you know, and... and <laughs> And Jesus is really not ready. He don't want to do anything yet. I mean, but Mama has said, you know, and Mama, you know, that's it. So uh, <laughs> there's six water pots, six water pots, six vessels of water, big, tall vessels, about that tall. And those six water pots are used to gather some water and you wash your feet because you walk to this thing in sandals uh, or bare feet. And when you get there, you need to wash your hands and feet before you go into the feast. And so they were for cleansing. Le Levitical law taught that you cleanse your hands and your feet when you go into, a, into a, any type of group. 
And so they go, and, and there's six water pots, and, and Jesus takes the six water pots, water, used for cleansing, and he changes it into wine. Six is the number of man. Oh, I'll preach myself out of here. Six is the number of man. Those six water pots, he changes, cleanse them. It's for cleansing by the blood. How many know the wine represented the blood? We're cleansed by the blood. They're changed into wine. How many know communion? We use wine. Well, we use grape juice. but we, Wine represents the blood. Come on. Hallelujah. And, and, and now these are six vessels which represents man, calls the end from the beginning. So it's man at the end. How many know it's talking about us? But the governor of the feast clarifies it, and he comes in and he says, You've saved the best for last. You are God's best. When you get to heaven, you're not going to wait in line to talk to Peter or Paul or, or, or Abraham or Moses. They're going to be in line waiting to talk to you. We've got to know who we are. We are about to reap the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. We're about to see signs, wonders, and miracles. We're about to walk in such an anointing that the power and the fire of God is going to burn within us. And let me tell you something. God has saved the best for last. God, the whole earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. We are those people at the end of the age that will reap the last harvest. And we've got to know it. And we've got to walk in it. And we've got to get excited over this. Hallelujah. Zechariah 10.1 says, Ask for rain in the time of the latter rain, and he will bring bright clouds. I mean, no, that's talking about the anointing. That's talking about the glory. It's talking about the Shekinah clouds of God. Hallelujah. God is about to bring a cloud into this place that's going to fill this place. And some of you will see it with your natural eye. I'll never forget when I was in Bible school, I was sitting there and I saw this, this blue haze come into the room at a, at a moment of great praise and worship. And as we were worshiping God, this cloud came into the room. And I looked over at the, my friend sitting next to me and, and, I, and I said, do you see that? And he looked at me and he said, yeah, I said do you see it too? <laughs> and we both saw that cloud come in. God's about to have us see spiritual things. God's about to speak spiritual things. And God's about to speak spiritual things through you. You're about to prophesy the last day's harvest. We're, we're not just saying, well, we're just kind of sitting here waiting for, you know, uh, see what happens. You're those six vessels that God said, I've saved the best for last. You will usher in the end times. You will usher in the last harvest. God says you're greater than John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist was considered the greatest prophet of the Old Testament. You say, well, no, no, John, John the Baptist was in the New Testament. No, he was before Jesus and, and before any covenant that we had. He ushered in Jesus. And it was considered the greatest prophet of the Old Testament to Christians because he ushered in Jesus Christ. Now, you're considered greater than John the Baptist. Why? Because you're about to usher in the second coming. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, thank you, Lord, for bringing me to the kingdom for such a time as this. Thank you that I was born for such a time as this. Thank you, Jesus. Use me. Help me. Show me. Put me in the right place at the right time with the right word. Let my eyes be open to the hurting. 
Let me know when someone's around me that needs help. That I'll minister the word. That I will be there in due season. Use me, Lord, for this last harvest. I decree and I declare Rockwall shall be saved. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Woo, glory be to God, glory be to God. Mm. Anybody need prayer tonight? Anybody need prayer? Brenda? Paul? Yeah. Okay. And when when is he going? Uh, Oh, he's already had a surgery. Okay. Any, anybody else need prayer tonight? Of course. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, come up here. Hallelujah. Gilda? You're going to see an acceleration now of complete wholeness in your body. What you have had, the glory of Almighty God is on you. And the glory of Almighty, there it is. There's the glory. There's the glory. There you go. Ooh, hallelujah. All over you. And now... <laughs> The praises of God shall come on your lips in even such a greater way and the full deliverance of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Whoo, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. I want you to say this. Every August. Every August. I don't have problems. I do not have problems. Jesus, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank I you, thank Lord. you, Lord God, <laughs> that every month of the year, the glory of God, the glory of God fills your lungs. The glory of God fills your sinuses, your bronchial tubes. And the glory of God, well, there you are. Be whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Take a deep breath. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Could you do that before? Yeah. But not without the tickling. The tickling wasn't there this time. And amen. <laughs>